Uh, today, I'll talk about the middle income trap. The middle income trap is a situation in which the uh, many developing countries, after achieving a middle income level, around uh, 10,000 to 12,000 dollars in the real terms, in the PPP terms, experience a slowdown or sudden slowdown in economic growth performance. Uh, more than 15 countries, maybe around 20, uh, have been the middle income levels uh, for many, many years now, sometimes for 50 years. Uh, here is to show that phenomenon. In the vertical axis, the, uh, you see the income levels from 3,000 up to very high level. And the horizontal axis shows the years uh, after the country achieved a little about $3,000 a year income per capita. Um, as you can see, many of the developing economies in Asia, China, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and in Latin America, uh, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, are still in this range, middle income range, uh, with some exceptions, including Taiwan and South Korea, uh, now joining the rank of uh, developed economies, uh, not to mention Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. The uh, <clears throat> question is uh, whether these middle income countries, especially China, uh, will be able to uh, break out of this middle income range uh, to move towards the uh, advanced economy uh, you know, rank. Uh, to answer that question, we have to analyze the reasons or, or causes for the middle income trap. The, there are, roughly speaking, three possible reasons. One, uh, there are resource constraints preventing these developing economies from growing further, which includes lack of savings, lack of capital, or lack of labor. And the aging uh, population means lack of uh, young workforce. The second reason, which may be a little bit more important than the first constraints, is the technological constraints or the industrial constraints that is the inability to move up to a high productivity economy or higher productivity industry, especially the high tech industry. The third reason is the institutional constraints or the policy constraints that is the failure to support poor and middle classes and the failure to support the uh, innovative activities, especially among those you know, middle income uh, class people, which is related to the second point, technological constraints. Focusing on the technology, we can apply the solo model as follows. Here is the production function. Output is a function of aerobic capital labor but also the technology level indicated by this A. Then the output labor ratio, Y over N, is a function of capital labor ratio as well as this technology level A. And then uh, we can draw this kind of graph. Here is the output labor ratio and capital labor ratio, as we saw before. And this blue curve is production curve subject to uh, decreasing returns. And then this straight line uh, in the 
indicating the population uh, growth rate. Then this intersection will give you the steady state equilibrium uh, towards which the uh, growth path will converge like this. Okay. But this turns out to be uh, corresponding to the middle income level, not the uh, advanced level in many cases, because that corresponds to a relatively low technology level, say A1, say 50. That's a low level, say. In order for this country to move up to an uh, advanced level, technology you know, level should be uh, increased from 50 to 100, so that this production curve itself will shift up. And the steady state equilibrium will change from here to here, then that will correspond to higher income level. So many countries are, are trapped in this steady state equilibrium, which is stable. In order to change this position, you have to level up the technology. So this way, Soro model can apply to uh, provide the uh, theoretical or conceptual framework to analyze the, uh, the middle income trap. Uh, whether this kind of technological progress can be generated internally or by policy or by outside forces. And those questions should be discussed in class.